I am still absolutely loving every single part of it. Good morning from Dublin. I am very excited to be here. Country number 15 for me. I'm gonna be spending uh, more than a week in Ireland exploring different cities, especially immersing myself in Dublin in Irish culture. So let's get into this. I am so, so happy right now, even though right now it's hard to tell, but it is pouring rain, but that's okay. Cause today's supposed to be the only day it will rain. So even though right now the rain is coming down pretty hard, my early impressions is that I really like this city. It is just reminding me so much of London. I love how we got the river right behind me. We got the double-decker buses. Not a crazy city skyline. They're like four or five story buildings. And yeah, just overall such positive vibes. Right now. It's very abnormal for me to be in one city as long as I am in Dublin. I'm gonna be here for at least five days. Normally when I'm in a city, it's literally for like 24, 48, maybe a max 72 hours if we're pushing it that far. So this will potentially give me a chance to, instead of literally just like speed run the city, take my time, slow down a little bit and embrace more in the culture than I normally would have. So during the day, Temple Bar is very lively with restaurants, with shops, with tourists, but also just regular people, regular residents of the city. And then at nighttime, wow, that's when things pick up and that's where you really get to embrace Irish pub culture. In Temple Bar at night, everything is lit up from the sign. There are lights that go just strung right across the streets as you walk along the road. It is just the atmosphere. It is so fun to be a part of. It is, reminds me a little bit of like, I'm thinking like an Irish Beale Street. This city is extremely walkable. It's uh, sidewalks are very wide, it's streets are narrow, and it's got a bunch of different alleyways that have shops and restaurants down many different corners. The entire pedestrian walking area becomes so, so nice, especially as it starts to get evening time and towards the night. It's not like it's in just one spot, one strip of the city. No, there are these areas all throughout. This is hilarious. They have a sign that says, look right as you cross the street because of all the tourists who by instinct look to left because that's how it is in their country driving on the right side. I'm making fun of all of the look right signs on the ground saying that tourists don't know how to walk. But the very first intersection that I crossed by instinct, I just looked left and uh, yeah. Good thing they have those signs on the ground because not me and somebody else could get hurt if they weren't there. I am outside one of the oldest universities in the entire world. Established in 1592, Trinity College Dublin has really established itself as one of the premier research institutions in the entire world. The campus is incredible. It's world renowned and it has actually one of the oldest and most famous books in existence in the library, which is often regarded as one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. So we're gonna go check it out. The courtyard is absolutely massive. You just have buildings all around you and they're very Gothic, they're very Roman, and it feels like you're going to classes in the 15th century, 16th century, which makes sense considering that they have maintained the designs of the buildings and kept it almost nearly perfect. I mean, it has a very old feeling to it and it has a historic feeling. I could so picture a student who is touring this campus and is being like, yeah, this is the school I absolutely need to be at. I know that feeling and yeah, I can, if I was like an Irish resident, this would honestly maybe be my number one pick for a school. So right behind me is the Guinness Brewery, literally where all the Guinness is made. This is probably one of the premier tourist destinations if you are in Dublin. 
So for me though, I don't know if I'll get a chance to check this out, mostly because I don't really have any actual interest in it. Everyone's telling me to see it because it's just really cool to be able to look at the process of how everything is done. Uh, but so we'll see. So I knew that the Guinness brew house was a brew house and a museum, but look right behind me. You literally see like, it's like a pure factory, which is very interesting to see the fact that we're in a major city right now. And in the 21st century, there are no really actual like real factories right in the heart of soul of cities anymore. It's hard to tell, but it's absolutely massive. This factory literally stretches like four square blocks. Oh, I never actually ended up having time to make it to the brewery. I think that's fine with me. But remember, if you have interest in beer, Guinness, or just brewing in general, it's something you can't miss. So right now I'm just walking alongside River Liffey, which cuts straight through the entire city. And it will literally, if you just walk along here, you'll not only go out all the way to the East Shore, but you'll be cutting through all of the main spots, like Temple Bar, like getting all the way down to the train station. And it's also a very nice walk. This is something that I highly recommend, not just here, but in any city that you visit, because especially in Europe, pretty much all of the major cities have something like this cutting through. And they're often also really aesthetically pleasing to look at. The city has many of these pedestrian only bridges that goes across the river, which is really nice because you just get to enjoy a nice relaxed pace. No rushing cars, making noises right beside you. The whole walk along the river is this very narrow sidewalk, but once you get towards Temple Bar, you get this long platform, which gives you a great view of the entire city. I love the overall design of this city. I mean, it really is incredible. You just go down every single street and there is something going on. There's life, there's livelihood, there's just like energy throughout everywhere. There aren't any like dark alleyways or places where it's like, oh, you should avoid. Everywhere I've been walking around, I felt completely safe. And everywhere I've been, there's just been, you know, it seems like people are like, genuinely happy to be living in the city. I've been to some cities where people are like, oh, you know, I live here, my life is fine, you know, but that's really it. But no, everyone, in, people have smiles on their faces, which I was surprised about a little bit because, you know, the stereotypical, like British and Irish, more like grumpy people, but that hasn't held true at all. Also with the architecture, it's just all throughout. There aren't any boring buildings. Like in New York City, all the buildings are very basic, just like straight skyscrapers. While here, each building has its own flavor, its own character. There are mosaics on many of them. Some of them have domes. There are different colors, like the ones right over my shoulder. You got like these orangish, then it goes to more of like a beige and just the different colors I find very cool. Almost like a little Copenhagen-esque. And uh, even on like the bridges, they're doing designs as well. Like right here, how you got these like sea horses, I think. I don't know. I find it, it's overall, it's like very aesthetically pleasing. So right now I am at Dublin Castle. So Dublin Castle was the administrative location for Great Britain up until 1922, when Great Britain had control of the entirety of Ireland. And, uh, you know, it was almost like the equivalency of a state legislature building in the United States. So Ireland ultimately gained its independence from Britain on December 6, 1921. Today now it is really used just as more administrative buildings, uh, more administrative offices for the entirety of the Irish government. And as you could have guessed, it used to be a medieval castle. So it's pretty cool how you can walk in the middle of a city center and see a castle like this one. While everything actually inside the castle is very modern, you still have the real walls, which are around the entire perimeter. 
You can't go inside. Now it's a museum, which pretty much discusses the Middle Ages in Ireland, as well as the Irish independence movement. There is a museum for the Dublin Castle that does have free admission that's different than the one that discusses medieval times. This one is more from treasures around the world, and it is called Chester Beatty. So that right there is the spire. It's literally just a metal pole that gets thinner and thinner as you go up the top and it's 120 meters tall do the conversions into feet whatever that is i'm like making americans look really bad but that's okay it's a cool structure because it's right in the center of everything you just look up and it's there this is absolutely awesome also look at these lights that are beaming out of the spire just shooting straight into the sky. I mean, this is unbelievable. I really hope the camera picks this up. Look, it looks like it's just going to, it, that's what it is, going to the space. And you have the projection of light onto this building, this administrative building. The nighttime is a, like a light show. It's so cool with just the projections and the different illuminated objects. They're literally showing us a show on this administrative building right now. This is, it's unbelievable. I'm literally at a loss for words right now at how just incredible this city is. Yo, as I'm here more and more, this is getting so close to topping Zurich as my top city in literally the world. Phrase that, in Europe, New York City is my favorite city in the world and nothing will ever beat it. But in Europe, this is, the more time I spend here, the closer it's getting. Okay, you know what? The more that I think about it, I'm sorry, it can't pass Zurich. I loved Zurich so much. And you know, Paris was incredible too. So I'll put it number three right now. My third favorite European city, Zurich, Paris, Dublin. So I want to know what companies are actually headquartered here. And I was surprised that when I looked, there were only three companies whose names I recognized. And two of them are actually airlines. So Aer Lingus, which makes sense, the Irish national carrier. Ryanair, which is technically headquartered in Swords, which is just a little bit like 25, 30 minutes north of Dublin, but I consider still that Dublin. And then Medtronic, which is a biotech company. But besides that, no other companies. A lot of them like Microsoft, Apple, Citigroup, Salesforce, which their building is right behind me, do have satellite offices here and have a large presence. But I was surprised that there weren't more that had actual headquarters there. So I guess this really plays into the role that I'm noticing of a lot of more family owned or smaller businesses, not the major corporate takeover, which again, is really giving Dublin that Irish flavor that I was discussing earlier. And also related to companies, of course there's Guinness, which is owned by their parent company, Diageo, which is headquartered also in Dublin. And also relating to like what industries are big here, it's a lot of finance, it's a lot of medical biotech engineering, and uh, service companies. But one thing that sticks out also is the technology industry. You also have companies like Okta that are here. You have similar companies that do similar things to Zoom, but like uh, European based companies. And as I'm starting to walk more and more into the central business district, you can see the JP Morgan building that's right behind me. So now I'm really starting to see the impact of like the finance world on this city. Because it does seem that with the big companies that are here, as I've already mentioned, finance seems to be absolutely massive. Seems to be, again, the biotech and then the technology industry. There's some manufacturing. There is a factory that's right over my shoulder. You have shipping also right over my shoulder. And besides that though, the restaurants, stores, everything seems to be much more local. So I guess that's the real major distinction. So I'm just walking and I come across this stadium. I gotta go check out what exactly it is. So right behind me, Aviva Stadium. 
which is home to the Irish national rugby team. It's also home to the national football slash soccer team as well, but they don't care about that sport here. Rugby is the main thing. The stadium seats 51,700 people. So yeah, it's big. And I love how it's literally built out of glass. I think that's a really cool feature. I love how like most European stadiums, it's built up literally right in the middle of a residential community. We have some homes and then you cross the street and literally the stadium. Rugby in the United States has started to gain some popularity, largely through a lot of small schools have teams, club teams, but they're teams nonetheless, and they compete at a very high level. Obviously, nowhere near the level people of the same age in places like here, like Ireland, can play, but it's still something, and it's a nice way that they're growing the game. Rugby, while it's really hot spot, is Ireland, New Zealand. You do have some emerging other places growing popularity in places like Spain, Italy, and even Canada, surprisingly. Another stadium that's right there in the distance, Croke Park. That's actually the third largest stadium in all of Europe. It has an 82,000 seat capacity. It's massive. Unfortunately, I'm so exhausted right now and I don't have time to walk all the way down there, but you get this nice view from the distance. I'm gonna check out the National Museum of Ireland, which will give me a comprehensive history on the entirety of this country. So I'm looking forward to that, especially to get out of this rain because it's chilly and it's also free admission. So that's a plus, especially if you're on a budget. So normally I'm not a big museum fan because I find that if it's talking about just history or talking about other things, that if I really wanted to see it that badly, I could just look at it online. I'm more of like a walk through the city, like experience the culture that way type of person. But because I have this unusual extended period in Dublin, I figured, yeah, it allows me to kind of have a little more relaxed pace. And you know, it's something different than what I would normally do. This museum is very interesting. It has a lot of different archaeological artifacts, some dating back to the 4th and 5th century. It also gives you a breakdown on the religious history of Ireland, Catholic versus Protestant, and how that formulated the Ireland that we know today. This museum is very similar to the Smithsonian museums in the United States. If you are a history buff, you need to check out this museum. You will love it. This right here, bronze tools made 3,000 years ago. Right here we have a tomb from over 5,000 years ago. Can you believe this, a structure like this is what they buried bodies in? 4,500 years ago, they used a boat in Galway that looks like this to transport goods. Galway is a city in the Northwest of Ireland. It's really cool how a lot of this shows Ireland during the Middle Ages, because that is a period that, you know, we talk about the Renaissance so much. We talk about kind of the Crusades, but then in between that time period, it's almost like forgotten history. It's awesome how a museum like this is free for literally anybody to go in and learn the history of this country. I mean, more museums should be like this, be very accessible to the public. The US does a great job by having the Smithsonian system and it's very similar to a lot of European countries. A lot of European countries, you can get free museums under the age of 25 if you are an EU citizen. If they wanted, they easily could have made this museum like 15 euros, 20 euros per person and people would still be coming. I'm in the museum now and it is very interesting. It's a lot of works and literature from the ancient world, whether it's from India, from present day Saudi Arabia, Mesopotamia, South America, etc. Although it's not Ireland specific, but still, I think it's pretty interesting. This is interesting. We got the Irish Emigration Museum. So in New York, I am so used to immigration museums with people coming to America. But here, it's literally a museum dedicated 
to people leaving and fleeing Ireland, largely due to the potato famine. So what I'm noticing in terms of homes is that everyone lives in a very kind of like quaint city home that you would find very similar to London and frankly most cities in northwestern Europe. So they seem like single family homes, usually a lot two floors. They are pretty wide and it's like all the homes are connected to one another. What's crazy to think about is none of these homes have a garage. You just park on the street and even if your home has a little driveway, there's no garage here. To me, that's just something that's like very different because even in large cities, like I was just in San Francisco and every single home, even in the middle of the city, had a garage. Some homes do have a garage and I assume you're paying a premium to have one of those. If you have multiple days here, definitely get out into a little bit of the outskirts of the city to see more quaint towns, see the residential area, walk through nice towns like the one I'm in right now. It's very easy to get to, only about like 45 an hour walk from the city center. You can take public transportation too, and you'll see literally exactly what you see downtown, but just at a much more like slower pace. It's very nice. So for about the past two hours, I've been wandering all of the true outskirts of the entire city. And every area that I have been in has been so, so nice, so quaint, with little restaurants, shops all around me. And it doesn't feel like there are any parts of this city that is like, oh, don't go, or oh, avoid, which is absolutely amazing. So I've already explored a large part of the city. And frankly, there hasn't been a single section where I've been like, oh, I don't really like this area. Every single spot has been lively. It's been quaint. It's been nice. It's been fresh, clean. And I am loving every second of this. Far, comparatively to London, this is such a similar city, but Dublin honestly feels like it has a little bit more of like a cultural flavor to it. London to me, still had like that British flavor, but more of like a corporate-y feeling, you know? I'm rarely seeing any large companies, large corporations around. I mean, everything that's around me is really just like, seems like family-owned businesses, family-owned restaurants, with obviously the exceptions of like big name hotel brands. So you know how in London, they have the big red double-decker buses? Well, here in Dublin, they're pretty much green. And that's obviously to signify Green is the national color of Ireland. So I would really recommend you taking a public bus just for the fun of it. Because to be able to go on the second deck, you get a front row view with the big window and seeing the bus go throughout its entire turns, it's literally like you're getting a private tour of the city for literally just like two, three dollars. So yeah, I actually love to do it. I think it's very fun. The buses here are incredibly efficient. Everything is timestamped perfectly. When the bus says it will be there, it will be there. And there are just so many around. It's like literally no matter where in the city you are, one's passing you every minute. Phenomenal thing is that they have this bus, the air coach, which takes you from the city center to the airport in literally about 15 minutes. And it only costs $10 one way which is a phenomenal deal especially because like i said no stops along the way and that it's a really nice bus too so maximizing on efficiencies there's a bus every like five ten minutes which is unbelievable yeah i can't get over how you know incredible they've done their public transportation at least in terms of buses i've heard trains are a little like uh like up and down but the bus system, that's squared. The city doesn't really have a skyline. It's just very much like two, three, four stories at the very, very max, which is very different than most cities in the United States because nearly all major cities have at least some sort of skyline, even if it's just a little bit. But that's a very Europey thing that there are only a few cities in really all of Europe that have like a true skyline. The ones thinking off the top of my head, London, Frankfurt, you wanna say Paris a little bit? Um, but yeah, here, 
only a few buildings actually go up more than four stories and those are either hotels or office buildings like the Google building, JP Morgan, etc. This is the most Irish truck ever. Literally a truck for Guinness dedicated to quality, having quality control for beer. That's wild. So I am at the Bay of Dublin and we have the Bay of Dublin Beach. Pretty low tide, so I'm gonna be able to get actually pretty far out there. So I think this is, you know, just another interesting spot. It's kind of like more in a much more residential area. So you get to see kind of like the homes here, as well as, of course, just looking out and seeing water as far as you can go. And you got some nice hills in the background as well. I bet during the summer, this becomes a popular spot with the locals. Because look at how expansive this beach is. And it also gives you a great place to swim. Just so many cool spots that I continue to discover. Like this open air indoor market. It's like I keep walking down the street and I'm finding something new. Even now as I've been here for nearly, or at this point, over a week. I'm about to go inside the Jervis Shopping Center, which is apparently a big central mall. It's very rainy right now, so it's giving me something to do. So hopefully, you know, it has some charm. So it's just a regular mall, which I expected. But because it's right in the middle of the city center, it allows you to just get a nice stroll and get some shopping done if needed. And because it's just after the holiday season, you still got all of the holiday things up, creating that charm. Right behind me, St. Patrick's Cathedral, just another one of the amazing cathedrals built here, whose architecture is really stunning. What sticks out to me is the grandeur, of course, but specifically this massive courtyard with a central fountain. I love the design. One very fascinating thing that I learned is that every student in the entire country takes Gaelic from first grade onwards. Even though it's English is spoken in the classroom, English is spoken at home, in the schools, and nobody actually uses Gaelic in real life, it's just, I don't know, that like, I find that actually pretty cool because it's pretty much a dead language at this point. So it's the government trying to keep the native language at least known, even though it's not being used. They don't want Gaelic to turn into the next Latin, even though it like kind of is just a more well-known Latin. So now I feel like I've spent a lot of time in this city. And honestly, I may be putting Dublin into a tier that it is very hard to get into. Dublin is genuinely one of my favorite European cities. It really is. And that's a tier right now. I only have two other cities in, and that is Paris and Zurich. So Dublin right there as well. I'm loving this place.